Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have my book review of the book, I Star Trek IKS Gorkin Enemy Territory. This is the third book in the IKS Gorkin series. I read and reviewed the first two books in the series. The first book I read a few months ago titled A Good Day to Die. And this is an amazing, amazing Star Trek novel. Loved this novel. This is fresh, unique, exactly what I needed to read to get me back into excitement for Star Trek books. And I just, I love this book. And I think that Keith DeCanado just gets Klingons in a way that uh, many authors do not. And this is essentially part of a duology, the second book being Honor Bound, which is also an amazing book. And I actually made this my book of the month last month in February um, uh, because it was so good and I, I just loved it so much. And uh, this, as a duology, is basically one big story uh, for Star Trek. You know, it could have been just a 500-page novel and instead he split it into two books. And it is just a, a fantastic exploration of Klingons, a fantastic exploration of the Klingon worldview and of uh, Star Trek uh, and, and, and viewing different species differently. I loved this duology. And so... Uh, uh, they, these were written and released back to back. And then the, the third book, uh, Enemy Territory came out a bit later. And I assume it was because of the success of the first two books that warranted getting a third book. And so I picked this one up and, uh, I apologize for it being kind of like, uh, broken there. And, and, and I, I bought this book used, uh, cause that's the only way I could find it. And this book, uh, uh, is entertaining. And I think it's a really entertaining book. But it just doesn't hold a candle to what the first two books were. Um, uh, and maybe that's because I put such high expectations because the first two books had been so amazing. And I was like, all right, you, you got to live up to that. But this was still an entertaining book. Uh, in this book, the Gorkin, now the ship, the Gorkin, uh, and Captain Clagg uh, basically go to help out another ship that's in distress as it was looking for new planets to conquer. And they end up finding this new species uh, that they need to... Uh, uh, fight, basically, the Elaborege, the Elaborege. And um, uh, there's a juxtaposition in this book where there is a, a group of the Klingons on board the Gorkin who want to do a mutiny, and they want to be revolutionaries to take out Clag because they think he's doing a bad job. And these guys are viewed as bad. They're villains in the book. They're not good guys because they're trying to supplant the Clag's leadership. But at the same time, you also have the Elaborege, which are the uh, other... Um, uh, uh, the, the the species that they're fighting and the Elaborege also have a uh, a group of revolutionaries who are trying to do a basically a mutiny or a, a coup against their leadership and they are uh, viewed as good because they're trying to overthrow a bad leadership whereas the Klingons are trying to overthrow a good leadership and so it's interesting that you have these two revolutionary groups that are, have the same goal of basically doing a coup slash mutiny yet one of them is considered bad because of who it was that they're doing and, and one of them is good because of who they're trying to get rid of and so it's just interesting that juxtaposition present. I also really enjoyed the action here. There are some great sequences of just cool moments and there's one sequence with the ship, the Gorkin, and I was like, that's cool. That's that's a cool way to write that sequence. So I really enjoyed that. Um, there's also just some stuff I just didn't love about this book. Um, uh, just It didn't have the deeper themes, and it didn't have the tightness that the first two books had. One thing I'll give the first two books is they're only about 250, 260 pages each, and they are tight. The, the story in there is really tight and, and well-written and, and fast-paced. And this one also is fast-paced, but it just doesn't have that same quality of tightness. It doesn't have the same quality of themes involved. And I mentioned some of the themes about the revolutionaries and stuff, but it's just not, it just to me does not feel like it was as good. Another thing about this book is that it, um, uh, uh, a good thing I'll, I'll say about it is that it deals with the character of Kurak very well. Kurak has been throughout the trilogy, and she was actually kind of annoying in the first two books, but she gets some significantly, significant character growth in the third book, and I really enjoyed her here. So that is... Uh, Karak. And then also uh, Vol has been the standout Klingon in this entire trilogy. In every book of the IKS Gorkin series, Vol has been like the standout. She's just great in every book. And uh, in this book, it's the weakest of all the three that she's in, but she's still really good in here. And her story is just, you know, entertaining. But the end, the end of the book 
follows her story, and it was just a beautiful ending. I loved the way they dealt with Vol in the ending of this book. So that is my review of the IKS Gorkin Enemy Territory, book three in the IKS Gorkin series. If you enjoyed this book, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.